In Amygdala, Suga finally concluded the story of the cheetah and Hegum, and the conclusion is very Suga. <laughs> it wasn't anything like I expected. <laughs> this knucklehead, I think, is just hell-bent in making my life miserable. <laughs> I mean, he put us through these wild swings of emotions and forced us to look at the most vile and the most monstrous and the darkest, deepest, dirtiest, corners of society and humanity and then he looked at us and said what the hell are you doing looking at other people <laughs> say your ass down you dumbass <laughs> look at yourself that's where the, the real evil lies <laughs> very sugar hi please don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification button i would really appreciate it and of course share the video if you can before i proceed let me just um, address everybody who's been emailing me sending me messages private messages on different social media and everyone that's leaving a comment i am trying to get to each of you one by one there's a lot of people who emailed me and i'm very very flattered i'm so happy to be hearing your your thoughts um so flattered that you're you're sharing all the things that you're sharing with me but i just want to take my time responding to them because you've been thoughtful in sending it to me i also want to be as thoughtful when i respond to it so just give me time i'll get to it but thank you so much and please keep on doing it <laughs> please please do so all right back to the video the truth about the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped part of our brain where memories are stored, helping us react to certain situations for the sake of self-preservation. It isn't the only part of our brain that does that, but it is essential to that operation. It associates events or certain stimuli to certain results so that you can avoid danger or indulge in good experiences. It can be something big as how you would respond to a crime or something silly like how people are scared of dolls after watching Chucky. For example, I don't like being called by my full name because that's what my mom used to call me before she would spank me when I was being bad when I was a little girl. So my amygdala stored those memories of my mom calling me by my full name so that even now I feel like pain is about to follow my full name. Or it could be that someone does not like dogs because they were bitten by one when they were little. Now, there are memories that you won't necessarily remember. Some are too painful that we store them away. Try to forget about it. But it doesn't mean they won't affect us. The amygdala stores memories so it can teach us how to respond to things. It is possible for you to see a certain color or hear a certain melody or be in a certain place and just feel sad without knowing why. Maybe it was the color of the shirt of an ex-partner when he or she broke up with you. Maybe it was the song that was playing when you heard of the death of a family member. You don't necessarily remember the details, at least not consciously. The amygdala doesn't just store memories. It conditions us how to react based on previous experiences. What is the song about? Sugar specifically said that we should watch the three music videos, the Cheetah, Hegum, and Amygdala in succession. So the message of the song must be contextualized with the message of the other two songs. And the other two songs were very much from the inside looking out. It's someone looking at what's wrong with society, how he can change the system, how to beat the evil authority. Amygdala is the opposite of the two. This is very much about looking inside of him. It's him showing us that the real evil is inside of him. He created it by hiding or ignoring or forgetting painful memories instead of dealing with it. It was his fear and weakness that created the monster and it is his continuous refusal to deal with the pain that's making it stronger. In the last part of the video, when he saw something scary, he ran to his amygdala. But this time he failed to open the door and we see the evil in him die. So maybe, just maybe, this is him saying it is us creating this evil that's putting us down. That every bullet we use to kill, that evil is the same bullet we use to kill ourselves. And the only way we can kill that evil, for sure, is to stop ourselves from running to it whenever we are confronted with pain and challenges. Our pain cradles our monsters. There is one particular scene that captures this perfectly. The first time we see the emergence of the second persona, what would become evil, is when he mentioned his first trauma. When he was born in 1993, his mother had heart surgery. 
he had to live with his grandmother for a long time because his mother was too weak to take care of him. That's how it began for him. And that's how it usually begins for every one of us. The moment we can't deal, we brush it away, we ignore it, we forget it, we bury it so deep we don't even know it exists. But it's a fascinating but also a scary thought that our evil is as strong as our pain. Because how do you kill that part of you that is protecting you from the pain, which is also what's keeping it alive? Our monster is guised as our protector. My amygdala, please save me. This plea is repeated throughout the song. It is as if he is proposing that forgetting the pain and trauma is how he keeps himself safe. The amygdala seems more than willing to do it as it responds, come on, let's erase them one by one. Yes, one by one. However, as we know by now, the evil is portrayed with a scar on his face. And it is the same scar on the face of the man locked in the room, which represents his amygdala. The message is clear. Forgetting or hiding or running away is the evil we create. Each time we escape from our pain, either by hiding or by blaming others, we feed the monster inside of us. The amygdala is not a savior. Just as many people in our lives pretend or claim to protect us when in fact all they do is make us weak or hurt us ever so slowly until we have no strength left to actually live. He had to live with the pain to become who he is. Going back to the latter part of the music video when the evil inside the room is getting weak, Suga seems to see something scary and opts to run away, a symbolic act of him escaping his struggles again. For some reason, he is unable to open the door this time. He is unable to reach his hiding place, his amygdala, unable to feed the monster inside of him. He finally gives up and slumps on the floor while his evil side dies. He killed his own monster by not feeding it his pain. In the end, it was the evil asking to be kept alive. Suga seems to have marked the characters using different melodies. The amygdala or the evil one is the one singing the melodic tune. That voice is the one offering to make him forget the memories. Come on, let's erase them one by one. Yes, one by one. Throughout the song, it was the only thing the amygdala or the evil was saying. I don't know your name. Your name, your name. Come on, let's erase them one by one. Yes, one by one. But in the end, when Suga ran to the door, trying to open it, screaming for his amygdala or his evil side to save him, the last line we hear is that melodic tune. But this time saying a different thing. Save me from here. Hurry, get me out of here. It could be a part of himself trapped in the room. Another option that I thought about was that it could be a part of himself trapped inside the room. It did cross my mind that maybe the one begging for help to be let go is a part of himself wanting to be freed from the grip of the monster that he himself created. So that can actually be more consistent with the theme of the cheetah and Hegum. Both are about the cycle of evil, how we will never be able to beat the system because once you beat the system, you become the system. So, so the same thing is true with the evil inside of us, even if we're able to beat it once because the cradle that creates it and nurtures it will always be there, which is the amygdala. It will always be a part of us that maybe we'll be able to confront several painful memories, several challenges, but at some point in our lives, we're going to give in again. We're going to feel like we can't handle it again. And so we're going to run to it again, thereby creating another form of evil. So it's more consistent thematically, but given that Suga himself said that he, the decision to end the trilogy of Augusti is that is his state of mind right now so it's a trilogy that he is ending not necessarily Augusty. he said that he is more at peace he has forgiven people he has forgiven himself he knows what to do now basically more at peace so i feel like he is actually saying oh i beat that monster so i think my previous the first one that i said i think it's i'm leaning more towards him being able to confront and kill the monster inside of him ending thereby ending the trilogy of the monster killing, evil killing trilogy of the cheetah. 
uh, Hegum and, and Amidala. Sometimes our safe place is the most dangerous one. And there's so many layers to this, but you can't expect anything less from the genius of Shoga. It could be about people that we surround ourselves with or places that we put ourselves in. Some people will claim that they're there to take care of us or protect us when in fact all they're doing is using us or abusing us. It could also be about against ourselves. We put distance between us and other people. We put up shields and walls when it doesn't really do anything to us. It doesn't toughen us. It doesn't make us stronger. In fact, it makes us weak because all we do is rely on the shields and, and the, the walls that we surrounded ourselves. We don't really make ourselves stronger. So he's saying you need to toughen up. You need to allow yourselves to feel the pain. You need to do things even though you know it, you're going to get hurt just because it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you wiser. So yeah, we need to we need to toughen it up and stop feeding the monster inside of us with our pain and misery and sadness. Because until we're actually able to kill the monster inside of us, it will continue manifesting itself. And and eventually because it's the its primary job, the reason we created that monster is so that it can protect us. And it will do so by hurting other people. It will protect us at the expense of other people. So if we don't want that to happen, we need to kill that monster inside of us. So yeah, hurt people hurt people, right? So it, most of, or at least many of the people who actually hurt other people, they do it because they think that's the best way they can protect themselves. So we, if we want that cycle to stop, then we need to kill the monster. And the only way for us to kill the monster is to face our fears, face our pain, make ourselves stronger. So it is a cycle. The three, the three, the story of the three music videos is a cycle, but it isn't actually. What he realized is that it is not a story of the oppressor eventually the oppressed being the oppressor or the abused being the abuser it's actually a cycle within ourselves as i've said hurt people hurt people once you are unable to let go of the pain when you're unable to deal with the pain or the misery or the trauma it eventually will manifest itself and because its primary job is to protect us, that's why we created it then it will do so if it if it see if it sees fit it will do it by hurting other people so from looking out from looking at the society looking at looking at other people looking at ways on how he can be authority he finally turned around and look, looked at himself and he re realized that the one that is hurting other people is actually him and he will never ever be able to kill that monster or that evil evil because it's it's him so he's gonna have to kill it himself he needs to kill that part of him inside if he wants to move on okay <laughs> that was quite a journey that he put us into if you have any thoughts if you have want to put uh, give your inputs please do so in the comment section below and you can also get in touch with me in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. I just want to let you all know that I am getting all of your messages. I am trying to read through all the comments. Everyone that is emailing me, I am trying to read them one by one. I am so grateful and I am trying to respond to each of it. <laughs> just give me time. A lot of you are emailing me like detailed thoughts on this whole thing, which is that I'm very, very flattered for one that you're sharing your thoughts with me and also very inspired and very happy that as a piece of art like a song can inspire you to really think about your own experiences you know, you, you, you're trying to make sense of this whole thing, trying to understand the art and the narrative. Um, and I'm just so happy to be, a, even, it's just a small part of it, but I'm happy to be a part of it nonetheless. Okay, so yeah, I will get to you guys. <laughs> just give me time. All right, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and, and hit that notification button. I will really appreciate that. And of course, share the video if you can. I appreciate you. And until next time.